Hello everyone and welcome to episode 43 of the WMA5 series here on the channel as we are now in the year 2001 for this modern day UFC save as we are here for Fight Island as our third ever Fight Island guard main event by Casey Kenny versus Cody Garbrandt a bantamweight contest it should be pretty awesome should be a, a fun main event uh, we also have Alex Rodic and Yuri Verhaska Rafael Scuño versus Zia Dong Song Alex Pereira and Cesar Ferreira, which is going to be a very fun middleweight contest. And uh, Dan Rodriguez d -Rod against Ismail Naradev, as far as that's the main card. Before we go through all the analytics stuff, I do want to have a quick uh, thoughts and prayers to Mark Coleman. The fucking hammer, man, was uh, involved in a uh, house fire yesterday, uh, last night, and uh, had to be life lighted out of there. Sounds very, very scary. I'm hoping that he has a full recovery because I do not want to live in a world that does not have both Kevin Randleman and Mark Holman. And uh, as far as, geez, I mean, that the, the Godfather ground and pound, one of the OGs for sure. And I'm hoping he makes a full recovery there. As far as, or back to the uh, UFC Fight Island 3 card uh, with our main event, you know, Casey Kinney. Cody Garbrandt, uh, both guys 29, as far as 15-2-1, uh, 12-3, and three, uh, Team Alpha Male for Cody Garbrandt, of course, and the American Top Team for Casey Kinney. Casey Kinney, 4-1, uh, and one, of course, Garbrandt, 7-3, he is the favorite, which is uh, really no surprise for Garbrandt. You know, this is a, uh, uh, a unique fight for him, you know, he's outside the top two as far as from the bantamweight scene, so taking on somebody that's ranked 15th is pretty crazy, but he is the favorite. And as far as for him, you know, of course, he just beat Ascunia, who's on this card already. Uh, you know, he's on a three-fight losing streak before that, so he's looking to get his first winning streak since, you know, he first started in uh, the UFC. This will be huge, you know, as far as for him to face somebody like Casey Kinney, who is uh, pretty great in his own right. He's 15th in the world, but he's 13th here in the UFC, so still a, a you know, guy outside the top 10. That's a, a huge fight. To take on, you know, that's not every day you see that. As far as for uh, Casey Kinney, you know, he just lost to Jimmy Rivera, got 30 27 to Jimmy Rivera. So, really, one would assume he does not have what it takes to take on somebody like Cody Garbrandt if he couldn't beat Jimmy Rivera. But you never know. And as far as I think with um, Casey Kinney, I think he's a better grappler, I think he's a better wrestler. We'll see if he will take him down and look to win that way. But, you know, obviously, Cody Garbrandt, a great boxer. And a guy that can end a fight in an instant, even at 135 pounds, he has some fucking power to make that happen. As our uh, light heavyweight contest, Yuri Prohaska, Alexander Rodic, as, uh, of course, Rodic ranked 6th, but it does not matter, because he is not the favorite. It is Yuri Prohaska, as 15-1, uh, or rather 13-2, uh, and 5-1 and one in the UFC, is Alexander Rodic, of course, the kickboxing native from Austria, who is... Uh, you know, as far as he just, he lost to Volkan, of course, in, uh, the last fight before the save, but he beat, uh, Michael as far as Olszewski, as Olszewski, I always forget how to pronounce it, I think it's Ol Olszewski, oh my god, alright, and we'll just, <laughs> Michael L, we'll just say for now, as, uh, yeah, he finished him in the second round with a TKO, that was at the, um, Gaethje, uh, Gillespie, I believe that was at, um, that was in New York at the ESPN Plus card. So his first Fight Island card. And uh, taking on somebody like Yuri Prohaska, who's an absolute savage in there. 28-3-1. He's undefeated so far in the UFC. He beat uh, Nikita Karailov. He beat uh, Shogun, of course. Got the split decision win in his uh, you know, first two fights here in the UFC. His first fight in the year 2001. Or 2001. 2021. Uh, of course, um, Shogun and Karailov, you know, they were 14th and 15th when they, uh, when they fought. They were actually ranked 11th in the company, so uh, this is his first time taking on somebody that's in the top 10, and uh, obviously has a, you know, not a great grappler for 205, but he doesn't need to, since we've matched them with a lot of guys who like to kickbox, especially somebody like uh, Alexander uh, Roddick, as far as being able to kickbox with him and stand up with him. Should be a very exciting fight. Uh, honestly, could have been the main event, uh, but just the Garbrandt, fight i thought made a little bit more sense to be a main event fight uh but this this is gonna be a really fun fight and this definitely has a fight island fight feel to it two kickboxers in there looking to fucking throw down and Escunia and yadong song this is another fun banterweight fight though as far as um Escunia, 
uh, you know, Harris has the uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu background, but he's able to stand up with guys as well. And obviously, Dong Song is somebody that, uh, you know, the Terminator is uh is on a bit of a path right now is looking to uh we we don't see blonde hair yadong song yet but he lost to thomas almeida he got 30 27 in that bout which is not great uh but uh, you know i'm ex excited to see what he can do as far as he's still ranked this will be his first ranked fight here in the save uh, you know scuno is, is the slight favorite which uh you know as far as of course we he, we just saw him lose to garbrandt in the save back in march he lost to sandhagen and uh marlin Reyes, as far as his last uh, three fights, all losses, but he, you know, it's kind of crazy. He beat Mores in a split decision. He's beaten Aljo in a split decision. Rob Font, he's beaten Dillashaw. He's uh, beaten Pedro Munoz. Johnny Eduardo, uh, as far as his crazy thing, he fought Uriah Faber in WEC. So a WEC legend. Oh, which actually, he didn't really fight a whole lot in WEC, but... He fought enough, though, I, I would say, especially the Uriah Faber fight. Uh, as far as that was, yeah, the Ben Henderson was uh, that made him and uh, Varner. Yeah, Uriah Faber and uh, Mizuki. Uh, M Mizuki, rather. And then, yeah, Cerrone and, and Henderson as well. That, that kind of 0 09, 2010, yeah, that kind of era of WEC before, obviously, they got bought out. I remember pretty fondly, guys. I, mean, I was in middle school then, so that's just kind of very much remember those cards uh but yeah uh, he's the younger brother of uh junior escuño of course but uh yeah I, I think for him if he can um it, it, you know as far as i, I would imagine he's going to try to use his wrestling but Yudong Song's a, a good wrestler he's just good all around he's gonna be a tough guy to beat you know another team alpha male guy as well we'll see how team alpha male bandit do on this card and then, of course Pereira Botan. And uh, Cesar Ferreira, my god, you know, Capoeira style versus a kickboxer. Of course, Cesar Ferreira doesn't have a great record, uh, 13 and 9, but he's pretty much fought all of his fights in the UFC, so there is that. And he, he's fought some tough guys along the way. I don't know why I hit uh, the scales instead of fight history, but he is on a three fight losing streak. But, you know, he's fought Marcotte, he's fought Marvin Vittori, Julian Marquez, uh, Ian uh, Heinzich. Anthony Smith, he's beaten Anthony Smith, he's beaten Jack Emerson as well, Svall Masvidal, Sam Alvey, Dalloway, Tiago Santos, uh, you know, he's fought some tough guys uh, along the way, it's pretty much since his uh, debut, not, not, not a whole lot of easy fights here, and that's um, pretty telling, uh, he rarely wins by uh, finish though, he, he's gotten a couple of submissions, but other than that, it's either going to be a distance finish or he's going to get knocked out. So that's uh, that's great for Poton. As uh, for, of course, Alex Pereira, who is coming in off of a win against uh, Gregory uh, Seaway as far as a... Uh, that was at the fight night back in June. Long time coming for uh, for Alex Pereira. He didn't finish Seaway, so we'll see. Seaway was pretty tough, though. He got cracked a couple of times. He kept on fighting. We'll see how Poton does. Um, obviously with Paul Tommy, no, he's kind of more fit for a light heavyweight run than a middleweight run. He is the underdog in this as well. So it should be interesting, though, to see, uh, somebody with a Capoeira style take on somebody like Poton who's looking to bash somebody's skull in with a head kick or a right hand, uh, as far as, uh, we'll see how that plays out. Then D-Rod and uh, Ismali, the Austrian wonder boy, Naradev, as far as, um, 20-3 and three for Ismal. 13 and 1 for Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, 17 and 24 in the rankings on the welterweight scene. So these guys are looking to make a, a potential jump into the top 15, potentially in the next fight. Uh, D Rod hasn't lost yet, as far as in the UFC 2 0. He beat Leonardo Santos, so he's already beaten a ranked guy in uh, the UFC. It's kind of funny, he had an LFA fight between <laughs> his uh, debut UFC fight and you know, his next fight. But his first Fight Island card, he's somebody that kind of fits the mode of what Fight Island's about. He's going to bring it. As for um, the Austrian Wonder Boy, Ismail is, uh, you know, as far as he also has beaten Leonardo Santos. He's 30 27, Leonardo Santos. So they both have that in common. Uh, you know, as far as we'll see uh, how he will do, as far as this is uh, this is going to be interesting one because I think Naradev is a little bit more well rounded, a little bit more of a, a better grappler. But uh, Dan Rodriguez has the power to make something happen, that is for sure. So prelims, and there's Michael Lowe, as far as he's taking on Bogdan 
Guskov, as far as the uh, Guskov kickboxing background, Michael Lowe, another kickboxer as well. He doesn't have a fight team, but uh, Bogdan is a Red Devil Fight Club member. Both guys are minus 110, so it is very, very close between the two kickboxers. As you could see, uh, making his debut in the UFC, he fought in M1 in the save already. Uh, but a 6'3 light heavyweight, pretty big dude. As for uh, Michael Lowe, of course, the Polish native. Ranked light heavyweight, of course, you know, lost to Rodic, and he also got choked out by OSP. It's kind of crazy he's beating Khalil Roundtree. Went to distance with him, too. And uh, he also beat Gian uh, Biante as far as he finished him. His first Fight Island card as well. These guys kind of fit the, the bill of what we want as a Fight Island card. Two kickboxers looking to bring it. And then Sergei Pavlovich and Justin Leddit. Uh, poor Justin Leddit. He's going to be in there with an absolute savage. Of course, Pavlovich, we know what he turns into. He lost in his last fight, though. He lost to uh, Latifi. And he also lost against Tabora, which Tabora was a tough fight, I'll, I'll be honest, giving him a guy like that. But he did fight over him in his first fight, so he's fought some tough guys already. But this will be, hopefully, his first win in the save. Uh, as far as still only 28, you know, so he got a long ways to go. A uh, tremendous all-around heavyweight, but obviously he has some fucking power behind his punches. He hits fucking hard. <laughs> For a, uh, for, just for not anybody, just as far as from heavyweights, he cracks some dudes. And he hits very, very hard. Uh, for Justin Leddit, he's going to be in some big, big trouble. But, as far as what's well, a pro boxer before this, uh, as far as had a couple of split decisions, uh, as far as so far in the save. One his way, the other against him. Uh, you, you fought Johnny Walker before that, and he saw, also fought Alexander Rodgers before. So, really, as far as was more of a light heavyweight, has moved up to heavyweight, has seen some success. It's been tough to really gauge. As far as a, a six foot four heavyweight, I just felt like he was kind of more fit for heavyweight than light heavyweight. Uh, we'll see how much he's going to weigh in. It weighs in at 234, so he's kind of relatively small than what a lot of heavyweights see, especially someone like Pavlovich, who's going to have it like 20 pounds on him probably by the time they fight. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. 15 to 20 pounds, give or take. We'll see, and also he doesn't have a team, too, so that's not going to have him. As CR, as I always forget how to pronounce it, Bader, Baderazda, as I believe is, no, I don't think that's how you pronounce it, but Baderazda, as uh, the Netherland kick, uh, Muay Thai fighter, about to say kickboxer, but the ne Netherland Muay Thai Dutch, as far as uh, kickboxer slash Muay Thai fighter, taking on Lyman Good, as far as Cyborg Good kickboxer from Manhattan, uh, as far as 4-2 in the UFC, a couple of veterans, for sure. I mean, you know, eight fights for Sayar, uh, eight or six fights for Lyman Good. As far as was a part of the Chuck Norris fucking World Combat League. It's pretty hilarious, as yeah, it was also the first Bell uh, Bellator welterweight tournament uh, winner. And then he also got the, the throne by Ben Askren. I'm sure Ben Askren just kind of laid and prayed his way to victory on that one. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you know, you just beat Bilal Muhammad. It's kind of crazy. He's, uh, he got his first win streak in a, in a since, uh, back in Bellator, so that's gonna be good to see from him. He's fought some interesting guys already. He's fought some, uh, grapplers for sure, for the most part, and he's came out on the better end of it for the most part, but now finally gonna get another stand-up guy in there, like CR, as far as, um, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. He, he's, uh, God, yeah, he was in, back on the Fuel TV era, the UFC Dong Yoon Kim, John Doomsday Howard, uh, as far as fought Brandon Thatch, won, won against Brandon Thatch, but uh, it's probably his toughest fight was probably, it, it, it would probably be Ismail or either, you know, Dong Yoon Kim or, or John Howard. Hasn't really fought a lot of tough, tough guys throughout his, his career so far, uh, especially for a career that's been as long as it has, but uh, as far as he's, you know, he's on the, the uh, McGregor-Diaz card, Kind of crazy, I think, you know, it's always very, you know, as far as any fighter when you're on that type of um, crazy card like that. And he was also on John Jones' and uh, Gustafson 2 card. So he had a couple of big pay-per-view fights and uh, under his, as far as being on those cards, obviously on the prelim. But this is, uh, this is going to be a good fight. This is going to be a good fight for him. I think uh, for both guys, both welterweights that are looking to stand up and, and bang, this, this should be a fun one. They're both in the minuses too. It's going to be a close fight too. As Johnny Eduardo and Marab Davalishes, oh my, I always forget how to pronounce his last name, but uh, 
Marab is 4 of 9 and 4, but of course, a incredible grappler. Uh, we just saw, obviously, in real life, him slamming around Henry Suda like it's nothing. He's taking on Johnny Iwata, who is obviously a, a tough veteran, but he's got nothing on Marab. Uh, Marab is the heavy, heavy favorite. So, I'm surprised he beat Mitch Gannon, though. One uh, split decision uh, back in May, so that's kind of crazy. 2020, 40 years old. Uh, Marab, of course, 2 and 2 in the UFC as well, but he beat uh, Brad Katona. In Terran War, this is his first fight in the save after losing to Ricky Simon and Frankie Sanez as far as his first uh, non-fight night card as well for him. But obviously we know what Marab turns into. We just got to wait and see how it all plays out for him beyond the save. If he will in fact kind of replicate that success or not. He definitely has the talent to do it. We'll see what he can do on this prelim. And then our flyaway contest, Azat Maxim. The Kazakhstan flyweight, tw uh, 14 and 0, taking on the Mongolian murder. Murder, as far as in Quailing, or yeah, as far as uh, the Sonata style for Quailing, 20 and 8 for him. Hasn't won a fight in the UFC yet, 0 and 2 for the flyweight from China, as far as, uh, it's kind of crazy though, as far as I think it is, he might actually have this record messed up, we might have to check that. Because, yeah, I don't, yeah, he's had a couple of fights... In, in the save as far as at Road FC and at a local show in Asia. But other than that, it hasn't really found any other place. So we probably, we'll probably take a look at his standings to make sure that's uh, correct. And then for Azat, as uh, the Kazakhstan native, making his first fight in the save. So he waited a whole year for it, but we'll see how the Kazakhstan native can do. Kicking off the show, he is a pretty clear favorite. So we'll see if he can uh, have that same type of success. In the fight itself, as Garbrandt made bidding for the third time here in the UFC. Third ranked Cody Garbrandt against 15th ranked Casey Kenny. As an American top team uh, member, though, Casey Kenny, you know, he's 1-0 uh, against other members of that team as far as uh, Garbrandt is. So he's, he's already got a, a psychological advantage over an American top team stars as of late. So we'll see how that plays out. Casey Kenny, uh, three of the last five fights have been won by decision. Garbrain, of course, is the, the heavy favorite. It's really no surprise. Yuri Bahaska and Alexander Rodic, as far as uh, both men have finished three of the last five opponents. Rodic ranked six. Bahaska ranked 21. Assuming he beats a, you know, somebody that's ranked just outside the top five, he's going to jump up a lot. Bahaska ranked, you know, as far as... Uh, he'll, he'll definitely be a... You know, if he can beat Rodic, I'm hoping he'll jump into the top ten, but... You never know with these ranking systems. Like, I really wish you could make your own rankings. That would make so much more sense. Uh, but Baraska is, uh, you know, he's ranked, uh, as far as I about to say he's ranked, he's 5-2 um, in LeBlanc has that pick, so he's the favorite. Corey LeBlanc has that picks. No, no surprise, he's definitely the favorite in my book as well. At both uh, world-ranked banner points here between uh, Rafael Scunia and Yadong Song. Song, you know, of course, American uh, team alpha male, rather, as far as uh, Scunia 0-2 against other members of that team. And then uh, for Scunia... He uh, trains at Jackson Week MMA, which Song is, uh, he has the draw against a Jackson Week MMA fighter. So that's a tough uh, draw for both guys, as far as both guys have a losing record. Scunia, though, hasn't won in a couple of years. Dong, uh, I best said Dong, as, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Dong, Dong, as far as he is, uh, they got a six inch reach advantage. Scunia is the Blurkat Sepik's uh, favorite, though, which is pretty surprising. I'd probably back uh, Ya Dong Song if it was me. Cesar Ferreira and Alex Pereira. I don't know how Ferrer is the favorite. I mean, Paul Tide has an 8-inch reach advantage. He is an absolute savage in there. I just don't see it. Has D-Rod, Daniel Rodriguez against Ismol. Is, Ismoli Nuridov, as far as the Austri Austrian Wonder Boy. Does have, uh, you know, he's the favorite of the Blackout Sapphic, even though he's ranked lower. It's going to be a tough fight, though. Both guys are very, very tough. As uh, Bogdan Guskov making his debut against Michael O, the Hammer. Let's see what he can do as far as he is the favorite. Now, this is going to be a crazy fight, though. Guskov is a savage in there. Both guys are really. And Sergey Pavlovich, big weight advantage, big favorite on the betting lines. Justin Lennett uh, might be in some trouble. Or oh, Ella Blanco might be in some big, big trouble there. Sayar, the great Bado de Razda. As, oh my god, I fucked that all up. As uh, Sayar, you know, Lyman Good. Sayar has won a couple of years. April 2018. Both guys have finished those three of the last five opponents. We're looking for some finishes in this fight. Lyman Good is the favorite, which is no surprise if somebody beats Malone below Mohammed. You'd think he'd be the favorite in this one. And then Johnny, Eduardo, and Marab. 
Avalish as oh my god, I, that is not it either. As uh the Volish, that's I believe that's a the Volish, yeah. As um yeah, Marab the Volish is a uh, heavy favorite in this one, no surprise. And uh, oh no, that's not the kicking off the prelim. This is that's right, as far as Azat Maxim and then the Mongolian murderer quailing or as far as uh, Masco making his debut and the big favorite as well in the betting line. We'll see how he does against the Mongolian murderer. Minus 410 on the betting line, of course, for Azat. He is the heavy favorite. No team, though. Uh, you know, for American Kickbox Academy Thailand member for Quailing Ori. So, you, you might see an upset here. They touch gloves. Both fighters step in the strike. Doesn't connect on the low, on the left jab. But lands a low kick, though. Left cur Oh, they got him with a fucking left cross. And he's already bleeding already off a of one punch. Ori with a leg kick. One, two, for Maxim. Ori now with a right cross. It's a counter, though, for Maxim, as far as it doesn't hit the uh, quick left... Oh, it's the quick left jab, and he doesn't hit the head kick, though. Another counter for Maxim, as far as a jab and a solid right hand. Or oh, counters the jab with a solid right hand, rather. As he slips past another right hook, attempt and attacks with a jab and a good right hook of his own. So far, he's definitely been outclassing them. As the left hand misses the vicious right... It's Ori. Ori again misses the right hook, but he gets counter with a left hook now. That's tough. Now they're gonna check on the bleeding... Oh, it's a fight ender. Damn. That's tough. Hate to see a cut end, a fight island fight, but, uh, it's the way it goes. Damn. That's tough. I mean, he was gonna lose, but you don't wanna see that, though. That is, that's a tough way to go about that. Tough start to the prelim, and tough start to get your first win in the UFC off of a cut. Johnny Eduardo and Marab Devalish, as far as we'll see how Devalish will do. 9-4, and four, looking for his 10th victory. Heavy favorite in this one. Fight begins, they touch gloves. Coming forward, they're starting to the trade blows. Morale countering the jab. Nice right cross, though, from Johnny Eduardo. That's an easy... Uh, he gives a glance at glove with a high kick now. There's a jab at a right hand that's taking on the gloves. So Johnny Eduardo, he's a tough, tough veteran. He can stand up with you, and he's not afraid of Marab at all. Caught him up with a feint now. There's a nice jab at a solid right hand. Counter jab from Marab. Gets counter with a great right hook. Oh my, oh, then Marab with a solid right hand now. Fight up moves in there, looking to open up an attack with a jab. Hits him with a leg kick as well. Two counter jabs from Marab. One for a head kick there, but it misses. There's a crunching right hook from Johnny Eduardo. My god, one two from Marab. Leg kick gets checked. Nice jab, and a right hook from Johnny Eduardo again. Left hand in the exchange from Marab. Jab hits him. Hits him with a big right hand. Counter jab from Marab. Scythering kick to the legs now. From Johnny Eduardo. Another leg kick. This time a, a body kick. Actually, as far as the jab and a right head kick from Marab. God damn, what a first round. Uh, both guys swinging for the fences. Johnny Eduardo stole that round. He's up. Yeah, he, what a uh, what a huge upset this can be. If he can keep it going. Eduardo steps back into the pocket. Two jabs and a leg kick. Man, yeah, now Marab looking to finally grapple with him. That was a... He should have been doing that from the beginning. Now, strike exchange begins. A counter left hand from Marab. Jab hits home, hits him with a right cross. Counter jab from Marab. Nice jab and a body kick now. Off the counter. Oh, and counter's a nice jab with a body kick. Rather, there's Eduardo. And trying to get in close, but Eduardo, again, is pushing the pace here. Scythering low kick. Attempts it fails connect. Now, Marab finally clinches up with him. Couldn't do anything out of it, though. I think Johnny Eduardo won that round as well. Wow. Uh, we might see a huge upset. And Johnny Eduardo, the 40-year-old man, might just beat a fucking future bantamweight champion. That is crazy. Well, he's got him in a clinch now. A couple of strikes aside of the head. Got him against the cage. Knee strike to the ribs now. Hell, now he's got him hooked now. Knee, not happening, though. Breaks free again. Now Eduardo is looking to strike again. Rob is in, he's got a, he's got a grapple with him, and it's just not happening. Finally, he clenches up with him again. Got to quickly find his way out of it. I don't know why he's not trying to take him down. He's just trying to knock him out, which, listen, I, I respect it, but it's not going to happen. He won the round, but he's going to lose the fight. He's going to 29-28 for Johnny Eduardo. That is insane. What a win in your 30th, uh, 30th career victory at 40 years old. Marab, 9-5. What in the world is going on? That is insane. 
What a win for Johnny Eduardo. My God, I guess I didn't check everyone at uh, Nova Cuneo as far as all of his various sponsors, all of his friends, and supporters. So they are the great. Taking on Lyman Good. See what happens here. As, as far as El Sayar looking for his 25th victory. Or Lyman Good looking for his 23rd victory. Both guys have a fight camp too. It's going to be very, very tough. It's a good strike exchange they are with a counter left. Fails on the uh, strikes on the combination from Good and then with a scissoring low kick. Good with the big right hand that misses. So here comes a counter from Sayar. A couple of jabs and followed by a right cross that just misses. Forces him to strike exchange now. Sayar with a counter jab. One, two. Sayar is equal to it though. Slipping past the right hook and counters a good right hook of his own. Good with a left hook. Or left jab rather. Scores with a great right hook though after missing on the jab. One, two from Sayar. Quick left, straight, right. Good misses the right hook. Here comes a counter. It's a right hook that's void the last possible second. Good misses the right hook. And now he uh, leaves himself open for another counter again. It's a quick left jab and a right hook. Good connects to the left hand. Oh, there's a wicked head kick from Sayar. And he knocks him down. Could finish the fight right here in the first. Pounding the way on him. He's rocked. Oh, and he's out for good. Referee stops it right there. As what a win for Sayar the Great. 25th victory. Knocking out somebody like Lyman Good. Huge win. Sparth was only rated decent, but I guess it wasn't really picking up speed as, as much as I would have liked, maybe, potentially. It's giving thanks to Sayar. Praise his team at All-Stars Training Center. He's very responsible all fans that came out to support him. As, uh, yeah, Sayar says, tough fight. Gives sure respect to Lyman Good. He knows how to sell himself here as our next prelim, Sergey Pavlovich. Taking on Justin Leddit. This should be a fun one. Mark Goddard's referee. Cage that judges. Here we go. They meet in this center. Leddit with a left jab. This is the right hook. As it's blocked. Left jab just find the mark on the right hook from Pavlovich. See what they got. They're standing and trading strikes now. Now let it misses the right cross. Here comes a counter. It's a quick left jab and a spin kick from Sergei Pavlovich. That's kind of crazy. Oh, here comes a right hook from Let It there. That's a great counter. And now Pavlovich trying to come forward. Two counter left hands from Let It. Low kick to the legs from Pavlovich. Left jab and a low kick from Pavlovich. Off target with a jab, but it's the right hook though. He's landing these hooks. Kick to the legs from Pavlovich. Left jab misses the right hand. Sticking on the gloves now. Left hand in the exchange. Three punch combination from Ledit. Uh, Pavlovich defends all of them, and that's the end of the first round. That's a hell of a round. Ledit probably won it. Yeah. Um. He did do probably more damage, but it, I thought I thought it was close. I mean, Pavlovich did did land more strikes, but him yeah, potential upset again. Fucking Pavlovich. I don't know what's going on. Oh, it gets counted here. It's Ledit with a quick left jab and a right hand. As they come together and start to strike again. Let it miss the big right hand. Here comes a powerful straight right hand off the counter and knocks him down. There we go, Pavlovich. Looking to finish the fight here. He's clearly hurting Justin Let it. Now he's in mount. Oh my. Let it's trying to go for a scramble. Oh no. Oh, okay. Never mind. Pavlovich takes it back. Yeah, he's going to finish him here. Oh, needs the hooks. There we go. Now he's going to finish him. Oh, he's going to pound away. Never mind. Jesus Christ. Now he's got both hooks in. Look at the right naked choke, and he's got him. My God, Sergey Pavlovich playing with his fucking food on that one. That was crazy. Uh, what a win, though, for Sergey Pavlovich. Finally gets a win. here in the save his 15th win. For Justin Let it. Tough break. Tough, tough break. He looked good, though. He looked good in that first round. Just couldn't get anything going. Michael O. It's Bogdan Guskov, our main event in the prelim. As, uh, you know, both minus 110, but both, uh, both kickboxers. This should be a fun one. Uzbekistan and Poland. Relatively same age. A little bit taller as Bogdan. We'll see how this fight plays out. As uh, Michael, with a, yeah, he's coming forward on the attack. Now kind of jab and misses. As Guskov as uh, now jab lands. It's the big left hand that misses though. As, uh, the, or misses with the big left hand rather. After the jab lands. Exchange of strikes. Nothing significant lands. That's find the mark on the left hook. So got the left jab and the right hook's blocked as well. So so far they haven't really been able to land any big time shots. Just kind of two men equal to each other. Off start with a jab. Lands a leg kick though, and Michael with a right jab and a body kick. Liking that so far. Right cross misses though. So here comes a counter. It's Michael with a leg kick. Jab in the exchange from Guskov. Trying to go for another leg kick combination. Quick jab and another quick leg kick. Michael's leg kicks are doing well. There's a glancing high kick after the jab, though. Didn't rock him, though. Misses the right cross. Here comes another counter from Michael. Right jab in the left hand. Caught him across the forehead. Another fight that's got blood in it. 
believe this one's going to be ended with a cut. Coming forward on the attack now, exchange of jabs. Misses all the strikes in the combination, then with a low kick to the legs. Guskov again gets kind of a good jab in the left hand. Tough fucking break here, as Guskov is just rocking him. There's a flurry of punches now. One of them lands, but the leg kick is checked. Michael's another quick kick to the lead leg. The leg kicks have definitely helped him out a lot. He, I thought he won the round. They're giving it to Guskov. I, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I thought he landed more. I, I, I don't get it. I definitely thought that was Michael's round. And plus, he got cut, too. So, like, I don't know what the narrator's thinking. As a 1-2 from Guskov. Quick left, straight right. Michael misses the jab. Connects the quick head kick. Oh, and he rocked him. Guskov's in trouble. Big left hand drops him now. Looking to finish the fight on the ground, potentially. And he's gonna hang in there. Guskov's a tough son of a bitch. My God, clean shots. Not many, but they're landing. He's still firing away. My God. Blocks the transition. Tries to pull guard. Not happening. Oh, Guskov's in big trouble here. He should be down two rounds. But maybe he's only down one. They're going to stand him up with about 12 seconds left. Another right, uh, left cross this time actually lands hard. Definitely Michael's round for sure. I would have said Ted 8, but that's just me. He should be up. He, he, he should be up. As uh, Michael now with a jab and a straight left hand that lands hard. Two right jabs and a scythering kick to the legs of Guskov. Straight left hand from Michael now. Guskov with a 10 left right hand. Punch from Michael. Fails to land now as far as Guskov trying to... Oh my god, he gets caught again with a left cross to land hard after the right hand. Michael's starting to feel a little fatigued, but I think he's done enough here. We'll see. A jab lands. Avoids the big left. Crunching left hook again after the right. Jab lands. Round us kick to the body. Michael is landing these combinations. Two punch combination, but uh, Guskov avoids it. Michael's very, very tired at this rate. Oh, if it doesn't, uh, find the mark on the right hook, but lands the left jab. Does Guskov. And now a clean left hand again. My god. Oh, and Guskov, though, manages to catch the kick. See if he's going to take him down. Not Doesn't take him down. And even pulled out of the, you know, combinate, or pulled out of the predicaments. And now they're back striking. His right jab and a big left hand from Michael again. There's a left jab and a leg kick from Guskov. But a left cross here from Michael to end out the round. What a fight. And what a performance from Michael. Oh, they're going to say 10-8 for that round. Interesting. Uh, definitely the wrong 10-8 round. But, hey, we're going to see a 30-27. I mean, Michael probably should have won 30-26, so if I had to guess for that second round, but I get it. I get it, because, I, I mean, the third round, I don't know how you give that 10-8, but this is, uh, yeah, that, that should have been the 10-8 round, but that's just crazy. What a weird scorecard, but at least we have the right winner, as Michael O. Well, looked fantastic in this fight with his 15th victory in his career. He thanks all of his sponsors for backing him. Also thanks his family, friends, and supporters of Bogdan Guska. Praises his... Praises in Guskov's toughness there. Their opening contest on the card. Daniel Rodriguez B. Rod against the Austrian Wonder Boy Ismail Nardev. Very, very close to the betting lines. Should be a fun fight. KJ judges there. Round one begins. Here we go. Nardev lands the left jab. The right hand's blocked. There's a flurry here. Two punches out of a sudden flurry. Then lands the left cross. Does Nardev. Rodriguez lands three of the four quick punches. Misses the left hook of the ribs, though. Great boxing from Nardev, though. Two quick jabs followed by a nice right hook. There's a jab that's connected to the right hand of the body, though. A pair of right jabs, also a right hook to the body. Doesn't connect with a brace of jabs. Lands a left hook, though. Scores the two-punch combination on a sudden flurry. Then lands a left kick to the rib cage. Two of the flurry of uh, quick punches there. Then hits a kick to the lead leg. Those four quick punches lands two of them. Hits a leg kick there. Uh, Nardev's looking real good so far. Rodriguez misses the left hook. Here comes a counter. It's a left jab and a low kick that narrowly misses, though. Misses a couple of jabs. Lands a right hand to the body, though. Here's a left jab and a leg kick again. Uh, so far, we've seen a lot of guys go for leg kicks. We haven't seen somebody, you know, kind of limp around because of them, though. And Nardev counters the left hand with a quick left jab and a right cross. He definitely won the round. He looked good. He, he looked real good. We'll see what happens in the second. Nardev with a left hook. Scores a quick punches. Two of the fl sudden flurry. And then scores a quick kick to the lead leg. Does D-Rod. Left jab. Misses the right house kick to the body. 1-2 from Rodriguez. Seven glasses left to counters the left roundhouse kick to the body. Does Nardev. 
Couple of jabs, misses the low kick, a pair of jabs that also has the right hand taken on the gloves. Off soccer with the left jab, also has the fail to land on the body shot now. Absorbs all of through the three of of the six punches rather. Does Naro dab. That is crazy. What great guard. Rodriguez feeling is, you know, the tense, the pressure here potentially. You know, he's already down one round, might potentially be down two at this point already. He gets caught with a glancing blow with a high kick now. Cut up underneath the eye as well onto D Rod. Yeah, D-Rod is in trouble. Misses with the left hook. Now he scored out of a single punch out of a flurry. Left jab misses the low kick, though. Naradev starting to slow down. Obviously makes sense. He's already up two rounds to none. So I definitely want to see him potentially at least not try and coast in the third round, but you can definitely see him probably going for it. It was a closer round that time, but yeah, just, you know, we got cut. He didn't land more, but, uh, you know, Naradev did more damage, so tough one. Uh, D-Rod needs a finish, for the most part, unless, uh, you know, scorecards are on his side. Pairs away the right head kick, and now a sequence of quick jabs followed by a leg kick. Misses, though. Hard left jab, misses the leg kick. Nails one quick punch out of a flurry, but can't hit the left cross. So yeah, Nardev's boxing's just so good. I didn't think his boxing would be this good compared to D-Rod's, but it, it's been sensational so far. Two quick punches. Out of a sudden flurry, can't hit the left cross, does Nardev. Uh, now countering with two left jabs. Doesn't land the leg kick, though. Two combatants meet in the center. Missing the right hook. It's kind of a great left hook from Rodriguez. He's still fighting hard, though. Oh, here we go. Powerful left hook from Rodriguez. He rocks him and knocks him down. Looking to finish the fight. D-Rod's going to look to finish him here. Oh, he can't do it. That is tough. That would have probably been his only way to win this one. What a tough break for Danny Rodriguez. Maybe a judge will give him the second, but I just don't see it. Maybe you can 10-8 it and have him draw. Uh, but either way, yeah, we got a 29-28 Rodriguez. 29-28 Navardev and 29-28 Rodriguez. Usually, I would hate to see someone get screwed like that in Navardev because I, you know, I did think he won rounds one and two. But when you drop somebody, it would be nice to see him you know, get a win. And uh, that was a good fight, though. That was a good fight for D-Rod and Ismail, Ismaili. As far as uh, Naradev, tough loss. Thought he looked really good. You know, had a great first round. Had a decent second round. If he, you know, he got outstruck, but he did cut him. So it was kind of a weird round to score. But he did get outstruck. 14-9. Uh, to nine. Of course, the third round, you know, obviously D-Rod won that one for sure. So it's nice that the guy who kind of won the more definitive round... Won the fight, too, so that's, that was nice. But, yeah, what a win for Dana Rodriguez. What a comeback. Is a name check they've on RVCA. All the series sponsors, all of his friends, family, and supporters. A lot of respect, though, for Ismaili uh, Narodev, as far as praising his toughness. And our next contest, Bojan, Alex Pereira, and uh, Cesar Ferreira. Minus 110 for Ferreira. Plus 100 for Alex Pereira, as uh, our judges here, here we go. Pereira preparing the throw. Right around this kick to the ribs, Jesus Christ. That would have crushed my rib cage in half. There's a nice head kick. Rocked him. Looking now to go into the Muay Thai clinch. Is he just looking to fucking destroy him? That is crazy. And now uh, Cesar Ferreira is now trying to wrestle with him instead. Now he's going to pull him into the guard. This is not good. Oh, God. Oh, thank God. Pereira doesn't get caught with an arm bar. Can't believe he went for a clinch there. Should have kept it striking. And now he's trying to pull uh, Pereira and Costa Pepper on the strikes. But that's not happening. Herb Dean's thankfully going to stand him up. Pereira definitely does not want to get caught with another head kick. As he steps back to avoid that. As uh, That's a great round obviously from Pereira. Won the round. Looking for another big time strike here to potentially finish this fight. And he gets caught with a feint this Pereira. And there's a right round. kick to the ribs again. Jesus Christ. Four quick punches, all of them landing, and then a right to the side of the ribs. Jesus Christ. Spinning back kick to the chest now. Whew. These body kicks are brutal. Big right hand from Pereira, and he rocks him with that one as well. Oh my god. <laughs> he rocks him and drops him with the right hook. Lord have mercy, Poton. He is a fucking demon in there. I mean, what can you say? He's a fucking savage. So Cesar was, I don't think he, he was ranked. So he's already beaten a ranked guy. And not only beat him, pretty much pounded him. 
into oblivion. Uh, that was crazy. Obviously, when you're a glory kickboxing champion in two divisions, uh, you're going to be a fucking demon when it comes to stand-up striking, and he definitely is. Boy, oh boy, yeah, that's just, that's going to be crazy. That is that's definitely going to be crazy. He praises his, you know, love it to share his MMA and fitness camp and his very sponsors all of his fans are going to support him and says that the ass about the knockout says he's managed to land the last punch perfectly he knows he can always rely on his punching power he definitely can so our first of two bantamweight contests on the main card Hidong Song and Rafael Scuno as far pretty close on the betting lines though minus one uh minus 164 Scuno plus 120 for Song cage side judges there here we go Song comes in closely looking to get some strike exchange going the song lands the uh, jab and a right cross that lands hard. That's a great one two from Song. Another one two and right cross lands hard again. Oh my God! Left jab and a beauty for straight right. I mean he is fucking him up early on. There's two kind of left hands from Escunia. One two. This time Escunia avoids him. Halfway point in the halfway point in the round already. Escunia countering with a counter jab and there's a fantastic right cross and knocks him down. Song is looking to finish the fight here in the first, and he does. What a win for Song. Poor Scunia, what's that, four in a row he's lost now? Yeah. Tough break. You know, he's fought some tough guys. Uh, we'll probably give him one more fight. Usually I wouldn't do that, but especially at 38. I uh, mean, 27 and 9. Might as well give him one more fight, right? You know, as far as you know, let him take on somebody that's um, maybe potentially not in the top 25. Because, uh, you know, S Song is tough. You know, Song is a lot tougher than a, like a ranked 18 bantamweight. Like, he's... He's a top 10 guy for sure, and we knew that going into it. It was going to be a good fight, and it definitely was. First round finish for Song, as he's praised the team of Team Alpha Male. His various sponsors on the fans came out support him as well. He invites everyone to a post-show wonders party at the local club. Oh my. Yidong <laughs> Song already looking to be a fucking savage in there. As Alexander Rodich, Yuri Prohaska. Come main event. Let's see if Prohaska can make it 3-0. and Against somebody like Alexander Roch, just going to be a very, very fun fight. As Herb Dean's referee, cage side judges, here we go, they touch gloves. Nothing really comes out of the strike exchange in the beginning. Baraska sees a head kick coming, and Roch, with a head kick that just about landed, I'll be without much power, though. Yeah, that's um, definitely, uh, you know, Baraska's countering is, is pretty solid. There's a counter as a leg kick with two jabs, while they right up that's duck, though. Obtaining the exchange from Roch. Roska doing a good job trying to initiate the strike exchange now after doing a pretty good job with uh, some of the counters. There's a nice jab and a big right hand from Baraska. Uh, about said, yeah, from Baraska. About said, uh, Potom, but Baraska. So strikes and some spin kicks. Rogers defends all of them. Pressuring him now, trying to get him into a strike exchange battle. Rogers with kind of left hand. One, two. Both, uh, I did it there. Baraska doesn't uh, land the strikes. Rogers lands the left hand exchange. Three quick punches from Prohaska, then catches him a low kick to the front leg. One, two from Prohaska as uh, Rogers is equal to it, though. Both fighters moving in. Stalemate there. Misses the right hand as Prohaska. Two punches sail past him, so it's good head movement firing. Proving to be far too good for Rodich. Yeah, I mean, he's, his defensive um, style, even though it's very unorthodox, you know, hands low, just, you know, kind of is uh, not afraid to get hit. And uh, he, he can use the speed to kind of get away from a lot of those big-time punches. There's a jab and a low kick there for Monich. Managed to land a, only one punch out of a sudden flurry as his leg kick is also checked. Raj uh, pushes aside a weak right head kick now. Demden comes back with a head kick of his own that just about landed. And that's the end of the first round. I think Roscoe won it. Uh, but yeah, not a whole lot happening. I was hoping that'd be a little bit more damage-inducing fight, but so far, there's the, uh, another head kick lands from Radic. There's a left jab and a right cross from Prohaska. Some strikes and a head kick, but Radic avoids all of them. It's now, uh, slipping past the right hook, attempting counters with a nice high right roundhouse kick, and he rocks him there. So there's the roundhouse kick that lands. Another guy that goes for a fucking Muay Thai clinch. Struggles against it. Doesn't get caught, though. He's doing a good job recovering to buy some time, and he clears his head. Somebody just throw a fucking flying knee on back in the end when you rock him up against the cage. That'd be nice. As Prosca got him against the cage. 1 2. Avoids both of them, though. Stalking his guy forward here. He's trying to fire off a counter jab. Does uh, Radic. Doesn't land it, though. And misses all the strikes. The combination does Prosca. Throws some strikes on the right head kick, but uh, Radic avoids all of them. Prosca, he's won this round, too. Uh, you know, he rocked him, but he didn't finish him, obviously. 
looking for this third round and maybe a potential 30-27 for Yuri Pahaska. Uh, but you, you still want to avoid the, the damaging head kicks from Radic. So he's been going for them all fight. And if he lands one of them, this could be it. Off target with a couple of jabs and a right hand now. Two-punch combination, though, from Prasca. Quick left, straight right. Now he's looking for a trip. That's interesting. And yeah, blocks it now take control. That also gets blocked. So how about Yuri Prasca stopping that? And now he's looking for another takedown. Now well, grabs the cage to block the takedown. Herb Dean with a verbal warning. And uh, now he's got him against the cage here, as far as trying to get some dirty boxing going. Goes to the ribs here. A couple of punches to the side of the head. Yeah, Radic doing a good job using his wrestling to avoid a couple of dirty boxing strikes up against the cage. Now Prasca again has got him against the cage, but he's pretty much tired. Herb Dean's going to separate him. Uh, Rodic is also tired. Both guys are basically tired here. I know it, uh, it's, a, it's a takedown. Prasca pulls guard. Maybe he'll catch him with a count, with a submission on the bottom. Maybe Prasca. I don't know. Uh, they're gonna sweep him. All right. Well, I mean, he might have uh, lost the round. I don't know. It's still thirty twenty seven for Yuri Prasca. What a win! Wish he would have finished him, but he's looking good though so far. You know, he's obviously um, you know, 29 three and one looking for a 30th victory in his next fight not sure who will put him up against a uh, clear round tree makes a lot of sense for a very very fun fight uh, but we'll see how uh, you want Ryan span Ryan span's a tough guy you know Ryan span's very very tough so uh, we'll try and we'll see what what he can do but yeah all stars training center they name checks all those guys all of his very sponsors all of his friends same as supporters how about your Oscar looking Good so far in the light heavyweight division is Casey Kenny, Cody Garbrandt. 12 and 3, 15, 2 and 1, our main event. We'll see if we have an exciting main. Smart guy the referee, cage side judges, here we go. They don't touch gloves as Garbrandt runs some meat from the crowd for not touching gloves. Kind of left hand from Kenny. Crunching right hook from Garbrandt, already looking for the big time right. And uh, there's a jab at a right cross here. Kenny with a kind of jab doesn't connect though. Jab its home, why the mark on the big right hand though? Garbrandt, obviously, his boxing is phenomenal. Stunning right hook. Knocks him down. Look at to finish the fight here, and he will. Yeah, Casey Kinney kind of got thrown to the wolves on that one. Uh, Garbrandt's boxing just too good for him. 13-3. and three. Big win for Garbrandt, and he won Sudo. That's a fun fight. That's a, a, a you know, boxer versus grappler. Definitely got to make that happen. Uh, so, yeah, Garbrandt gives an inject there on a team alpha male. So, team alpha male. Clean sweep on the main card. And a hell of a night for, for Team Alpha Male for sure. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, this was uh, only 1,500 people showed up for this card. It's kind of crazy. But, uh, you know, uh, Song wins. D-Rob with the comeback. That was great to see. Pereira looking tremendous. He'll be ranked next. Baraska's probably, uh, you know, as far as beating, not only beating somebody, but destroying a sixth-ranked light heavyweight is pretty crazy. 30-27 him. And really was in no danger at all the entire time. Very, very shocking to see. I cannot believe Johnny Eduardo won as well. Like, that was just crazy. Eh, well, I mean, we didn't really lose a lot of popularity. Really, just Africa was kind of the biggest place we lost uh, popularity. So, definitely performance balance for Prohaska, for Song, for Rodriguez. Um, trying to think, maybe Potan. Yeah, Potan. And Johnny Eduardo. And we go. So, that will do it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. Hey, we made about 650. Nobody made over 100,000, though. It's kind of crazy. But uh, at least everyone made over 1,000. So that's nice. A lot of people made over 10,000. So that's nice to see. Good good stuff there. So that will do it, though, for this episode. Thank you all for watching. And now, believe our next fight will be our first pay-per-view of the year 2021. We'll see how that all plays out. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Take care, everyone.